Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets and more. All right, Jim, you just spoke with John Flannery. What's going through your mind? I think that John's got a tough task. I think he uh, has to very quickly put the past behind him. He has to uh, very rapidly move in order to be able to uh, get the $20 billion proceeds that he wants to get in order to be able to have a, a, a much more simpler organization. I think he's a straightforward guy who's been dealt a very tough hand. Uh, I think that Power, the, one of the businesses he that he owns, is a very important business. They represent 30% of Power worldwide. They have to figure out a way how to make money on that service revenue stream, which is really good. We've got two service revenue streams that are ideal, the aerospace service revenue stream and Power. Um, healthcare has a very, very solid franchise, but they have to unwind things. And I think part of the problem is, is that had you actually had a better feel for what the company was going to earn, mm -hmm. you would have realized that uh, perhaps the downturn was coming uh, much, and it was much more steep. Uh, but even as recently as February, March, uh, you were being told that business was quite good. Uh, so it's uh, mystifying. Uh, the opaque uh, numbers that the company reported, I think made you feel much more confident. They made me feel much more confident. We uh, own infraction alerts, it was clearly a mistake. I've said that many times, why didn't we boot it out? Uh, I felt that if you, like Mr. Flannery said, if you take a longer term perspective, they're going to fix it. Uh, Nelson Peltz, whose um, colleague, uh, Ed Garden, is now on the board from Tryon, has made some aggressive presentations uh, and, and, uh, and statements to me that by this time and two years from now, the stock will be higher. My Chapel Trust, we take that long of you. So uh, we're looking perhaps to buy some at 16, 17 if it gets there, because then it would be valued as the worst conglomerate, because arguably it is the worst conglomerate. I think the dollar five that they can do, I think they can beat that, provided they work fast mm. to be able to dispose the difficult divisions. Are you more worried about 2019 than 2018? 2019 concerns me only because 2019 was presented as, uh, I'd say, fairly rosy for power. Um, power is the swing vote here. Uh, oil and gas, we know, is not doing well. I mean, look, uh, look at Slumberjay. Slumberjay is a much better company than mm. Baker Hughes GE, and that, that's everyone. I mean, I could say the same about Halliburton. Uh, Transocean, whatever, it's in service companies. Uh, and, and I think that they are, uh, they've got to get full value. I don't know how they do that for oil and gas. Uh, we know that locomotives, when I interviewed Jeff Immelt in February, he said they were doing very well. I, I get the sense that maybe they're not doing as well. Um, there was just this miscommunications between what was doing well and, and what turned out to be not doing well. And I think what mystifies me is, is that it could have turned down in six months. Mm. Uh, because big businesses like this tend not to turn down in six months. You tend not to be in a situation with a company like this where you think you're gonna earn a dollar, you know, two dollars, and then it turns out to be dollar sixty, then dollar thirty, and then it turns out to be a dollar. These big companies tend to have much more predictable revenue streams, much more predictable earnings because they have long tail businesses with, with service revenue. So what seems to be uh, bothering me the most is how could the numbers be so bad if they were so good in February? That remains a question for me that is unresolved. What we have to do is uh, a shareholder, my tr trust shareholder, is say, okay, Flannery's gonna get his arms around it. Now, when you bring up the past, I'm mind mindful of, um, once I went to hear Bishop Tutu speak, and he was talking about how come South Africa went to become a society where uh, from apartheid to uh, a, a plurality. And he said that the reason it was able to was they created a truth and reconciliation committee um, that really dealt with the, the so-called crimes of the past. I was trying in my interview to say, look, I need truth and reconciliation about what happened and why we thought it was so good. Now, some of that is personal because I was a fund manager for a very, very long time. I started investing uh, stocks in 1979, and it's very rare that I could have misjudged a company like this without something going on with the company that made it so that you would have misjudged. Uh, a Nortel, a, a, a Tyco, and look at these things that where I've done wrong. I mean, I re remember I run, run Action Alerts with an open hand, and I look at those companies, and those are the only companies where I was really, really um, betting on something that turned out to be not true. So uh, I don't, I'm not accusing GE of any accounting fraud whatsoever. 
I am saying that they had a method of reporting that did, I think, present the same numbers uh, that I might have looked at as rosier than I thought. Again, not any SEC issue, just a way to be able to present the numbers that made them give you a level of comfort that you should never have had. And that's what I feel about GE, because sometimes you do just get had. Sometimes you cannot be able to understand what's really going on. A very smart man like Nelson Peltz buys the stock 25, 26, goes to 30, recognizes and still believes in the stock. And uh, I don't believe, I believe that 2018, uh, massive heavy lifting year, I think Mr. Flannery will get his arms around it. Um, I think that it's difficult and it's not in his interest to have truth and reconciliation to figure out what went wrong. But it's in my interest because I hurt people. And I like to own that I did that. I don't hurt travel trust, you know, people who count on me. And I want to be able to say to people, you counted on me. Here's the mistake I made. But when I go over the mistake I made, the mistake I made was, to ex was about credibility. Mm. I thought that management had more credibility than it did have. And what I liked, what I wanted to Mr. Flannery to say is they didn't have credibility, but it's, he's in a different position from me. He has to work at the company. He has gotten rid of, a, 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 of Immelt's people, which he has to do. But it, you, there is a level of pain that comes with recognizing that the way you report things uh, were not as, um, uh, they were suboptimal versus what you would have loved to have known because had I known how the company was really doing, I would have been selling, not saying it's fine. And, and Jim, it's hard to look at GE when you have a company like Caterpillar reporting, you know, 19% well, growth. Well, you've got a company, Caterpillar, which I went over on my Mad Dash, yes. is reporting really sensational numbers. And now Caterpillar, it's, it's not apples to apples. Caterpillar is uh, earth moving equipment. Uh, GE has got a fabulous aerospace franchise. No one is doubting that. They've got a fairly good healthcare franchise, but certainly much better than it was, and that's Mr. Flannery. They do not have, uh, when you go over Honeywell, Honeywell's got a similar profile. United Technologies has a similar profile, but you know, Honeywell's got turbochargers. They had, that's not GE's business. And, uh, United Technologies has uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, obviously they don't, uh, and it has Otis. Those are more cyclical, and um, they can get hurt on a downturn. We had felt, Again, coming back to what management had told us, that power was a secular growth business, that gas turbines were secular growth. And I believe that. Why? Because in our country, 35% of our power had been generated by coal not that long ago. Now, gas has passed that through uh, power companies that have chosen to close coal and build natural gas tur turbines, as they call them. And I think that I believed that as I went and I interviewed so many utility managers, and I like to have the CEOs on, I had s seen all of them say, listen, we're moving very fast to natural gas. Around the world, they're moving to natural gas, getting out of coal. Uh, China even saying, listen, we can't do coal. India's still an outlier. So I had felt that the fundamentals of the natural gas turbine business were strong, which made me then say, you know what, that's a good business. Uh, and when they bought Alstom, I was unsure. Uh, Matt Horween, who writes with me, uh, and some really, really good judge of things, he and I were very skeptical of buying a company in France because it's very hard to lay off people. But you know what? Jeff Immelt assured us that the synergies, which he first thought would be a billion, are going to be three billion. Now there again, where's the three billion in synergies? I don't see it. So I keep coming back to the mistake I made was to believe. And that's quite different from not doing your homework, mm. but it doesn't help because it produced the same result. All right, and for more on GE, everyone can tune in to Jim's Action Alerts Plus call at 11.30 live today. Right. We can't wait for that. All right, Jim, moving on, Work Capital reportedly offering to buy Buffalo Wild Wings. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, it's not as, uh, not like someone coming in, a, a giant European company coming in and buying Panera. Um, I don't know where a capital, uh, I think that buying a restaurant chain that does not have uh, momentum is uh, not what I would do. Uh, one of the things that has hurt Buffalo Wild Wings, I know this from Bar San Miguel, uh, is that you frankly need to make your money on the liquor because you can't make that much money on food. But this new generation of people likes takeout and they don't necessarily uh, they want the wings, but they might not stay. And the problem with that is, that therefore, you don't get their liquor. 
Uh, and, and if you don't get the liquor orders, then what happens is you really, as we know from Red Robin Gourmet, which is a really amazing conference call, that things are happening so quickly that you end up uh, realizing that you've run into a wings to go issue where you, where you uh, order wings or you order pizza at home through Alexa, you just tell them to order it, and then you get liquor at home, which is much cheaper. Now, I, I know that people like to go out. And I charge for Bar San Miguel the same price, the prevailing price for the big Constellation brands, which is uh, people like Pacifico and, and they like Modelo, Corona, uh, and, and these are uh, these are good brands. But people in the end, and Constellation is a great stock, and I think that keeps going higher. People in the end don't want to go out and buy and sit there and have wings and sit there and drink expensive liquor if they can do it at home. Jim, meanwhile, Home Depot reported great comparable store sales. How come the stock isn't reacting that much? You know, Home Depot continues to do this. Uh, it, people sell it. Uh, it reaches a level. Sometimes it goes down a lot, and then it comes back. Uh, I think that to sell it is to think that those numbers are not sustainable, that very big guide up. I think they are. TJX, to sell it is to say that you don't care that Puerto Rico was included in the comp numbers, 35 stores that were closed. That's meaningful. And it mean, and TJX is apparel. So it, it, you're really betting that Northeast, uh, uh, that it wasn't Northeast warm weather that hurt TJX. It was just lack of execution. Now, obviously, again, this retail is very hard. We only have one retailer in uh, Action Alerts, thank heavens. Uh, but the, 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 and I thought it was more immune because they are the recipient of all the inventory that the Macy's and J.C. Penney's have to get rid of. Uh, I like TJX, and I think people are giving up on that. I like Home Depot, and people are giving up on that. But let's remember, the market is ugly. Um, we've been through a period, a very benign period. We want the market, uh, those of us who are bullish, want the market to come down a bit. Why? Because it got overheated. Uh, you want others to come in. You want others to come in who otherwise might have thought they missed it. This is their opportunity. We often talk about on Mad Money and in my real money writings that what you want is uh, for stocks to pull back. Mm. And so the problem is when they pull back, people come up with excuses not to buy. I will not come up with those excuses. I see things I like. All right, Jim, staying with retail, we want to just end with earnings to watch. Anything you're expecting from Target's results? Uh, you know, there's a... There is a, uh, a dichotomy here between what they can report. I think that they have a lot of good proprietary clothing uh, and how people will react. And maybe uh, people are reacting. If you go over, for instance, what happened at Macy's, Macy's had a pretty good quarter when it comes to the capital structure and the stock goes up and then it gets hit again. Uh, the same thing could happen to Target. It could go up and then get hit again. Uh, the group is continually being challenged by Amazon at bricks and mortar. I know Doug Cass said, look, you know, you can buy plants on Amazon, so don't, you know, don't think that Home Depot's got a lock on that. Those of us who are gardeners know that you can't buy plants on Home Depot on Amazon because you need to check the plants. I mean, that's what gardeners do. We don't buy that flat, we buy this flat. There are reasons why Home Depot has good numbers. I also think that the build, rebuild of, use of, of, of Texas and the rebuild in Florida will be substantial because uh, particularly in Texas, there are uh, insurance checks that you get and people go to Home Depot, contractors go to Home Depot. I'm not saying I'm sanguine about retail. I am saying I'm sanguine about certain retailers and I just think that the whole group is getting thrown out. The group is also challenged by ETFs. Uh, notice Walmart's been very strong, so people decided that Walmart's the only one that can take on Amazon. I think that there are a couple that can take on Amazon. But uh, I do think that in the end, people think that Target is challenged with BOPUS, which is a uh, buy online, pick up and store, uh, and that BOPUS is uh, losing credibility as a way to be able to complete, compete with Amazon. Uh, would I buy Target? As I said earlier, uh, we've already stuck our head in the oven with TGX, which is better than Target. You don't need to stick your, your head in the oven twice. All right, Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much as always. All right, everyone, go to actionalertsplus.com, join the club, and watch Jim's call live at 1130.